Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about paths, cycles, and connectivity within graphs. Okay, now first we'll begin this video by talking about some special types of graphs. Now the first one that we'll talk about is what's called an edgeless graph, which by its name suggests that it's a graph that doesn't have any edges, right? So it's just any number of nodes, but of course there's no edges. And of course you could have something that looks like this. Okay. So that's an example of an edgeless graph. Now a complete graph is a graph in which any two nodes are connected by an edge, right? And we denote this by Kn for n nodes. And of course it will necessarily have n choose two edges, right? So an example looks something like this, right? Now, of course, why will it have n choose two edges? Because you need all the possible ways that you can select any two nodes and connect them, excuse me, with an edge, right? So of course it would have n choose two edges. Now, if we think of a graph as representing a relation G, we can form another graph, which we'll label G bar. And that, of course, we'll denote as the complement of G. Now, this has the same node set as G, but it has a connection between two nodes if they're not connected in G, right? So for example, if this graph here is G, then this graph here would be G complement. And of course, one thing that you can maybe see here is that in G, these two are not connected, but they are connected in G complement, right? And then on the other hand, these two are connected in G, but you're not seeing that connection in G complement, right? So that's sort of the idea behind a graph and its complement. Now, if we take N nodes and we connect one of them to all the others, we get what's called a star. And of course, this will have n minus one edges, right? So of course, in this one, that's sort of like the connecting node of the star. And these are all connected to each of these three nodes. So that's an example of a star. Okay. Now, next type of sort of terminology here is that if we draw n nodes in a row, and we connect the consecutive nodes with an edge, we get what's called a path. And of course, a path will also have n minus one edges. All right, so in this case, we have a path of length four because we have one, two, three, four edges. All right, so five nodes, four edges. So you see that the number of edges is n minus one. Now, of course, the first and last points of the path are considered the endpoints of the path. So this would be considered an endpoint as would this one. Now, if we connect the first and the last nodes together, we get what's called a cycle, or a lot of times this will be called a circuit as well. Most of the time I'll refer to it as a cycle. Now, this is the same graph that we just looked at, the same path as above, only now I've just added this edge to connect the two endpoints, right? Now, of course, this is a cycle of length five, right? Because now adding this edge here now creates the cycle. Now, the number of edges in a path or a cycle is referred to as its length. And a lot of times we'll refer to a cycle of length K as a K cycle, right? So we could consider this as a five cycle right, because it has length five. Now, just be aware of another thing that we can do here is uh, one thing I mentioned in the previous video is that we can draw uh, the same graph in many different ways, right? So for example, these two graphs here both represent paths of length five, and they each have four degrees with two nodes and two degrees with one node, right? And of course, this graph here, shows two cycles of length seven and each node has degree two, right? So there's multiple ways to draw the same graph. There's just might be one uh, particular drawing that might be more beneficial than the other one. For example, when we're drawing these graphs, we would probably stick to these two, unless there was some sort of obvious reason um, to do this in another way. A lot of times why we 
might draw this more complicated version is because we're looking at a geographical map or something like that. Okay, now the next thing is uh, the idea of a subgraph, and we call a graph H a subgraph of G if it can be obtained from G by deleting some of its edges and nodes, right? So for example, if we have this graph here, this graph G, and if I were to delete this node, this node, and its adjoining edges, I would be left with this sort of this triangle here, and that triangle we could consider as a subgraph of G, right? That's one example, right? I could also, for example, just remove one edge, and that would be another subgraph. Okay, now a connected graph is a graph that for every two nodes U and V, there exists a path with endpoints U and V that is a subgraph of G. Right. So in other words, a graph is connected if any two nodes are connected by some path. Now, another way that I like to think of this is that it's not disconnected, which may seem obvious, but let me explain. So not disconnected is another way to think of it. So a graph is disconnected if you can find a pair of edges sorry, find a pair of nodes that are not joined by some path. Okay, so for example, we have something like this. Let's say I wanna go from this node to this node even though they're not directly connected, I could go from here to here, and then from here to here, and from here to here, and then from here to here, right? And I could do that with any pair of nodes here. Now, we wanna be aware of something here, right? We're gonna suppose that A and B are connected by a path P, and nodes B and C are connected by a path Q. Now, is it possible to connect from A to C? Well, of course, the obvious answer seems like yes, right? But your intuition might tell you if you want to go from A to B and then from B to C, take P, and that will take you from A to B, and then just pick up from B with Q, and that would take you from B to C, right? However, you may get an intersection with P and Q, which may be a problem, and you might traverse the same path twice, which is something that we usually don't want to do. Right, we want to take the the shortest path possible. Right, so for example, if this is my path P from A to B, right? So we can see that we're going here along this way to get from A to B, and my path Q, I would then go from here to here and that would take me to C, right? But you're seeing here that if we were to take P and then Q, what would happen is that we would sort of go here, down here, go over to B, and then we would sort of intersect ourselves coming over here, right? Which of course is something that we don't wanna do, right? So instead what we do is we follow our path P until we get to a point that's in common with Q. Then once we get to that common point of Q, we then proceed along Q until we get to C, right? So that's where we're getting sort of this path from A to C now, right? So as soon as you get that the common point, if they share a common point, then you would do that, right? Now, the next thing that we'll talk about is what's called a walk. Now, a walk in a graph G is a sequence of nodes which will denote V0 through VK, such that V0 is adjacent to V1, V2 is adjacent to V3, etc. Now, this is similar to a path, 
except a walk may, may pass through the same node multiple times, whereas a path cannot, right? So before, the idea that we didn't want to pass through this node here twice is because we were looking at a path. If we were looking at a walk, that wouldn't necessarily matter because we can pass through the same node if we wish however many times we want. Now, if a walk's first and last nodes are the same, we call it a closed walk. So essentially a path that's like a cycle, a walk that is like a cycle is referred to as a closed walk, right? And of course it would be closed because you're back where you started from and you'd sort of, you would uh, form sort of a closed shape, right? So for example, this would be considered a, a walk because if I follow along, I'm going from V0 to V1 to V2, then to V3, but then I'm coming back to V1 for V4 and then coming over here for V5, right? And then of course for a path, same node set, but I'm not hitting one more than once, so we would consider that a path. Okay, now next, we're gonna let G be a graph that is not necessarily connected, okay? Now, G will have connected subgraphs. Of course, at worst, we could just make a single node and that's technically connected. Now, a connected component, H of a graph, is the maximal subgraph that is connected, right? So we want to take, in other words, H is a connected component if it is connected, but any other subgraph containing H is disconnected, right? So this, this little thing here is showing that we have three sort of separate connected components. We have this component here, which is by itself. And then we have this entire thing here, And then we also have this part right here. So it looks like the region with the most nodes and edges would be this one. So this would be our connected component. Right, because it's the maximal subgraph that is connected, right? And of course, technically these are also connected components but usually we want the maximal, right? So usually we would take that big one. Okay, so that concludes this video on paths, cycles, and walks. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.